A boy and a girl in a boat. Romance. And she sings. This is what you have done. What I've done? What do you mean when I, I, I love you? I told you so. That's all I love. Help me. Help me. That's all. Who told you you could sing? Stargazing, Ronson? Yes? You outdoor men don't like a roof over your head, do you? No, not with such a good one over us all. No, 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 Courtney. You know that stuff's poison for you. If you won't take any exercise. Hang it all, Graham. I didn't ask you down here as my doctor, but as one of my oldest friends. Come on, be a sport. Just one cup. Well, poison's poison. One cup of 50. If you won't take exercise. Exercise be had. Oh, I'm a bully. A man can't poison himself in his own house. Oh, Dr. Graham's bullying your poor uncle again. Come on, let's cheer him you up. You go. The sight of me never helps him. <laughs> I shouldn't have married you, George. I should have adopted you. You're being very unfair, Kitty. I thought you should be the first to know. But I don't want to know. Would you like me to deceive you? You couldn't deceive a waxwork. You'd only exasperate it. You know you're going to ruin our vacation in Europe. Now then, you two are going to ruin the weekend down here if you go on like this. What is the matter? Oh, well, nothing. Well, Judy, you were on the boat with his coming over. And you know how much I saw of my devoted husband. Well, he's just told me that that blonde who got off at Cherbourg has a successor. Oh, well, it isn't his fault. I bet she's running after him. <laughs> Who was that? Young Randall. Hanging about waiting for you. Look here, Stephanie. I didn't want to come to this place at all. You could have stayed at home. And let you come here alone? Oh, thank you. Good evening, Jackson. Good evening, lady. Good evening, Sir John. Good evening, Jackson. Scandal. Oh. That must be the Fitzmaurice woman. Hello, Nick. Hello, Fitz. How are you? Uh, may I introduce Miss Judith Rogers, Colonel Sir John Fitzmaurice, Lady Stephanie Fitzmaurice. I've heard a great deal about you, Miss Rogers. And I have you. Is this your first visit to Stony Hip? Yes. And I love the place already. Mr. and Mrs. Drayton, Colonel Sir John How do you do? How do you do? That confounded woman, I hoped you wasn't coming. I understand, Sir John, you're in the guard. Must be thrilling guarding the palace day and night. Now, look here, young man. None of your monkey tricks tonight. When the guards go to the top, do they really wear those tall, fuzzy helmets? Good evening, Mrs. Graham. Careful, Doctor, you might win. Then you'll have nothing to do all the evening. Oh, 
by the way, Stephanie, you don't know Ronson, do you? Not the Ronson. Ivan Ronson, the explorer. Yes. Lady Stephanie Fitzmaurice. How do you do? How do you do? Oh, it was frozen. I thought you spent your life among the icebergs. Sometimes society's thin ice is a pleasant change. <laughs> Why are you so upset? Upset? She's the most shameless hussy I've ever met. And I met a few in my time. Snatched him away under your very nose. Oh, she's known him longer than I have. And I can't blame Nick for admiring her. Admiring her? She's clever, unscrupulous, and dangerous. Dangerous? Oh, oh, the boy's not made of stone. He's my nephew. She'll have him in the divorce court before he knows where he is. Unless he gets himself safely married first. Oh, is marriage so safe? Oh, cynic. No. I was only wondering. A young woman of your age has got no business to wonder. Here. That'll do. Stop this hanging about. Hop it. His lordship. Strong. Where are you going? That's my business. Yeah, and a dirty, rotten business, too. I know where you're going. Oh, what do you want to ask me for? Look here. I've stood about another desire. Oh, stop your nagging, can't you? Driving me silly. Driving you silly? Well, you're driving me mad, that's what you're doing. I'll tell you straight. Somebody's going to get more than nagging next time I catch you. You know, I did not know Miss Rogers was your niece. She isn't. She's no relation. But I knew her father very well. And she takes advantage of me to call me uncle. Oh, uncle oh, Portly. Dashed impertinence. Still, oh. she's a clever girl. <laughs> her father, splendid chap, but no head for business, left her nothing. And she's earned her own living ever since, hasn't she? Mm -hmm. Indeed, and how? Interior decorating. Oh, very interesting. Yes, I've had five years very hard work. Now I'm over here with the Drakes on a vacation. Mm -hmm. Will you excuse me, please? I must find my wife. Oh, quite. Hello, Fitz. Lost your wife? Oh, yes. You'll find her in the garden. Thank you. You're in love with her? Yes. You're going to marry her? If she'll have me? She'll have you, all right. We'll just have to forget. That's the one thing I can never do. Never. I love you, Nick. It's the only thing I'm aware of in my life. Nothing you do can alter that. I'm awfully sorry, Stephanie. Perhaps I ought to be glad you're getting married. Why? Oh, my dear. No marriage is ever what you think it's going to be. Difficulties crop up. It's rather like a steeplechase. Everybody gets over the honeymoon hurdle. There are others to come and people fall. You may. And when you do, you'll need someone to pick you up. Having a dull weekend, you seem to be just looking on. You have an English a saying, the one who looks on sees most. No? You saw me send Sir John after his wife, and she's after Nick. She'll catch it. Or Nick. Nick. Yes. What is the it? The cook stabbed a maid. A thing like that that happened at Stony. The 
certain problem with a vengeance. Oh, my dear, be yourself. We're all sisters under the skin. Is everything going to be all right? I think so. It was a narrow escape. Mm. You were not so anxious to see as the others. No, you have not the morbid curiosity of the crowd. No, because I always think there, but for the grace of God goes Judy. Mm. Why do you suppose it happened? Jealousy. Jealousy? As frantic as that. Look beyond me. Jealousy is a wild beast. <laughs> I thought this place was peaceful. Oh, here it is still peaceful. This primitive passion, it causes us heaven. I don't understand it. That's just the trouble. You don't. Not all marriages are like these. How did you know what I was thinking? I have been alone so much. I have found words are not so necessary, except sometimes to hide one's thoughts. I wouldn't try to hide any from you. I couldn't. I hope she's not badly hurt, poor little maid. You mean that poor little wife. The maid will get over it. The wife may carry the scar all her life. Isn't some perfect understanding possible? Isn't there any way to make sure that a marriage will last? I mean, happy and fine. No, there is no one way for everybody. Mm, I hope I can find the answer for myself. Oh, you will. I have been very happy watching your happiness in love. You know? Yes, I know. <laughs> Do you know that I love him so desperately that I am afraid? You are too courageous to be afraid for long. I hope that's true. I know it is. Will she be all right, Doctor? All right, there's no need for anxiety. Good night, Doctor Ronson. Doctor? Yes, you've helped me too. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night, Sir John. Thank you, my dear. Good night, my dear. Thank you. Give that to Nick. Good boy, Georgie, Cody. Good night, Nick. Good night. Good night, dear. Good night, Lord. Now, Tony, and we better. Good night. Good night. Good night, boy. Good night. Tony, in bed, Doctor. Nick! You're a little rest. What do you mean by trying to sneak off to bed without saying good night to me? Oh. Yes. Good night. Oh, no, Judy, that's not enough. Shh, quiet. I won't be quiet. You've answered my question. What question? What question? You don't know what. I've only asked you 99 times, that's all. It's still beyond me. When Mr. Ronson goes back to his iceberg, why don't you go with him? I wonder when and how Sir John asked her that question. What her dreams of the future were when she said yes. Well, never mind about them, dear. Just you, Sylvia. This place is creeping with people. Graceful affair. She's a pretty girl. That's no excuse. She can't help being pretty. The cook might have killed her. The cook and her husband must have been in love once. And now look at the tragedy they've come to. I'm sorry about the way I could deny George. Still, I don't blame you for falling for Judy. Well, you women, you certainly amaze me. <laughs> I wouldn't mind if you and I could take things as lightly as Kitty and George. Then I shouldn't be afraid. But what have you and I got to be afraid of? You look into yourself too much, Judy, darling. Listen, I'm going to be here for a whole week. And I'm not going to let you go with the others, whatever you say tomorrow. You've had a lucky escape, all of you. You and your wife had better come and see me in the morning. Yes, my lord. Judy, say you'll stay. I told you I'd think about it. But I can't face a night of suspense. Oh, Nick. Exercise confounded nonsense, touching my toes at my time of life. Hello. I thought you'd gone to bed. I was held up. Do you know it's safer in America? Uncle asked Judy to stay on this week. I have asked him. She said she would. Oh, one day I'll wring <laughs> your neck. Uncle, isn't it about time you were in bed? I'm going. Leaving young people about at this hour of the night. They didn't do it when I was a boy. Where's that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Judy. My sweet, I love you so terribly. And I love you terribly. Well, then, say yes. Nick. <laughs> 
Suppose you and I came to hurt one another like these people tonight, and others I know. Well, we shall. It seems the ones who love terribly hate terribly. Let's be sensible and wait. Oh, who wants to be sensible? I do. We're going to be down here for a week, a heavenly week. But you must promise me one thing. You won't ask me again. Not yet. Well, I shan't have anything else to say. <laughs> but I'll go back to the Drayton's unless you promise me. I mean it. Promise. All right. Good night. Oh, darling, there's, there's just one more thing. Will you marry me? Oh, uh, Nick! <laughs> Good afternoon, my lady. Good afternoon, Briggs. Is Mr. Randall in? Yes, my lady, I think he is. No, my lady, I think he's not. Well, could you find out? Yes, my lady, I could. No, my lady, I'm afraid I couldn't. He's gone away and he won't be back for a month. He's gone away, my lady, and he won't be back for a month. And you don't know where he's gone to. And I don't know where he's gone to. Does Lord Portley know? Let it know. I... I beg your pardon, my lady. Well, if you want a special kind of marriage, how do you propose to set about it? Well, I don't think people ought to marry just because they're in love. You know, these have been repaired, but they're very good. It ought to be based on something oh, much more stable, like friendship, companionship, sort of perfect understanding. Are these on the list? Yeah, yes. And then there'd be harmony from the word go. No, people must differ. Harmony would be deadly without discord. What's this? You know, Nick, the essential part of anybody's individual. We can only grow up out of our own experience. That's why marriage shouldn't stop experience. The funny thing, what is it? That's an old scold's bridle, dear. It's what they used to fix on their women when they talked too much. We'll take that. Oh, no, we won't. Yes, we will. We will. Yes, sure. yes, Pardon? yes! <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> Yes, it's been there since the house was built. Grandmothers and her grandmothers and her grandmothers. Oh, it's lovely. Judy, in your marriage ideas, how about jealousy? Oh, hmm? there oughtn't to be any. Well, wouldn't you ever be jealous? I don't know, I've never even tried, but I know one sure thing. I'd be ashamed if I were. Selfish and petty. That's the trouble. Married people think they own one another. Nobody can own anyone else. Why, Judy? Is it Judith Rogers saying these outrageous things, or is it my great-grandma? Maybe both. Maybe I'm seeing for the girl who wore her. She wouldn't have dared to have said it because she'd had her head cut off. But you're not going to cut my head off because I'll go right on saying it. Have I got it right? Well, what on earth does this mean? Marriage contract. Never to be husband and wife, but lover and mistress. And above everything else, to remain individual. All right? I don't think so. Ah, I'll sign it. No, those are my ideas. All right, dear, you sign it. But as a matter of fact, you've converted me, you know. Converted you? Yes, converted me. Now, I call that a most original contract of marriage. See, that? that's us. Us? Yes, Nicholas Randall, party of the first part, and Judith Rogers, part of the second party. Oh, well, dear, I suppose somebody will have to murmur a few words over it. But in the holy presence, of your own ideal, you're my wife. Ah. Bless my soul, here are they come. Where are those pits? Hear me, Lord. What the deuce are you doing? I'm not the bride. Give me the pit. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
All right, Johnny, hurry up, will you? Nick, you're a mighty lucky man. This is awfully nice of you to come with all the worries of your expedition. I had to come just to wish you good luck. Oh, thank you. You know, I think I feel as you do when you strike out into the unknown. Come on, Judy. Yes, darling. Goodbye and good luck. <laughs> Now, no false flag. Go for that work, Kent. And remember, it's up to you now. No, go for that. Oh, no, 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 none of that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Eternal sunshine. For Dolly? No, darling, of course I'm not. I must say, I would like to feel a little English rain on my face again. Oh, that's a poor excuse. 
I'm glad we haven't got to play all our lives. It has been wonderful. And now it's like the end of the first chapter. First hurdle. What's that? Nothing, nothing, nothing. First hurdle? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm back in London. Yes, I noticed he was. They say his next trip's going to be the most important of his life. Mm. What's your name, huh? <laughs> Another foreign problem. We've been going around so much, I'd, I'm always a language or two behind. Come and see Alma. Pedro. Yes, well, I knew we'd get at it. Now listen, Pedro. If ever I have a little boy like you, as I, as I was saying, if ever we have a little boy like you, he won't have quite the same eyes. No, they'll be gray and deep with things going on behind them all the time. And his nose? No, his nose won't look quite like that either. It'll be just tilted up a little, as if you wish the mouth wasn't quite so attractive. <laughs> and his ears? Well, maybe they'll be a little cleaner. <laughs> maybe he won't look like his mother at all. Maybe he'll just look intelligent and interesting. Like his father? <laughs> yes, like his father. That's a senior. Ah, the mail. Well, if you see what? Oh, the taxi, the mail. No, no. One for you, none for me, and none for cousin Nanny. And <laughs> from Kitty, can postmark. Can? Mm. Oh, they want us to go down there. Oh, listen, you two bells have honeymooned far too long. Why don't you come down here for a holiday? <laughs> <laughs> you ask about George. Well, at last I realized what was wrong with him was his curiosity. <laughs> These sunbathing beauties on the beach leave nothing to his imagination. So now he's turned to speedboat. He and Nick would have a lot of fun together. Oh, Judy, let's go. Oh, I thought you were tired of the sunshine. Oh, well, darling, it's different down there. Come on, just one more fling before we, before we settle down. Settle down? Yes, dear, yes, to work. <laughs> all right, playboy. You get it all out of your system. But let me go back to London to get the flat ready. Oh, darling, that's a perfectly horrible idea. Oh, Nick, listen. Without you to distract me, I'll get done ever so much quicker. And then if I'm through in time, I'll join you. Would you do that? Mm-hmm, if I can, if I can, well... You just have to come back to your little domestic wife in your brand new home. Well, I don't want to be away from you, darling. <laughs> Nick, what about the contract? The contract? Oh, yes, I've forgotten. Does Kitty say anything about the cocktail regatta? I've won it the last two years. Yes, I know you have, but you mustn't go in for suicidal things now. I think I heard mention of a little word, contract. I don't ask you to go in for it with me, you know. Oh, but I'd rather, then we'd both be killed together. But you being killed without me that I object to. <laughs> All right, darling, I won't. You win. You always do. Oh, then it's decided. You're going to Cannes, and I'm going to London. Well, I'll think about it. Oh, here's a postscript. There's a grand scandal abroad, and by abroad, I mean both, in the form of our lady, Stephanie who is fitting about Europe, Stan's husband. Gee, how I love that dame. Maybe she'll bump into her, but it won't be your palsy wellsy kitty that takes the bump. <laughs> Ready for lunch? lunch?
Well? You're going to have your laugh, Kitty. You're right. I'm hopeless. Lovesick. And I've just wired Julie to come. Alas, Nicholas Randall, the great lover, has dwindled into a mere husband. Well, cans are wash out without Julie. Any place would be. <laughs> Look what I found. What a delightful surprise. When did you arrive? This morning. Hello, Nick. Hello, Stephen. She made the trip over the mountains from San Moritz all by herself. Drove all night. Pretty good, eh? I suppose Sir John is coming along with the rest of the baggage? No. He's still in London, as far as I know. Old Mama and Papa Drayton are going to take good care of all these lonely little husbands and wives. Now let's all have dinner together. But George, darling, tonight is our dinner with Aunt Agatha. She'll be terribly hurt if Nick doesn't come. And you know how Aunt Agatha is. Who on earth is Aunt... Oh, Aunt Agatha, of course. Well, in that case... Yeah. Been down here long? A few days. Enjoying it? Yes. Take this. George tells me your wife isn't No, but she's coming. Oh? George didn't tell me? No, I didn't tell George. My dear Nick, you don't suppose any grown woman ever meant those ideas? Yes, I do. How nice and boyish. <laughs> They're very clever ideas. Clever? They got you. <laughs> no, you're wrong, Stephanie. Judy's the most sincere person I've ever met. In that case, you're as free as the air. Must be very nice to realize you won't be letting Judy down. Whatever you do. And yep. I can't understand, Nick. Why won't you enter for the race? I promised Judy I wouldn't. Hello. Oh, hello. I hope we're not intruding. Hello, George. There's a telegram that came earlier this morning. Oh, thank you, Joe. Will you excuse me? Of course, you're coming to watch your husband at my cocktail regatta this afternoon. Oh, how lovely. I didn't know I was invited. Well, certainly you must come. Judy not coming. No. Oh. Why? She's doing the flat. Must be nice to have such a domestic little wife. And you can't be sure. What do you mean? Well, with her ideas and sincerity. Just among friends, I'll tell you who's going to win the race this afternoon. Who? I am. I've been practicing. Yes, the cocktail part. <laughs> if you want to make some money, take a tip. Straight from the shaker's mouth. Well, you stand a sporting chance. Now that the great Nixon non-starter. Who says I am? George, you'll need all the practice you can get because you're going to get some real competition. Nick, you're not entering. Watch me. That's a challenge. I love challenges. Come on, let's get to the <laughs> Thank you. 
known as a cocktail regatta. <laughs> now, the object of this race is suicide. <laughs> the competitors line up here at the bar. They swallow their cocktails, but not the glasses. <laughs> they swim out to their boats, and they start up the motors with luck. <laughs> then they make for Jean Le Pen. At the raft there, they pick up more cocktails. Oh. Yes, they do. Then they head across to the islands, where, if still conscious, they have yet more cocktails. Oh. And from there, they head back to the finish here, if there is any. <laughs> and let there be no moaning at the bar when they put out to sea. Oh. Thank you very much. Come along, you maniacs. <laughs> Mind you win, Nick. Oh. Got your cocktails? Well, here we go. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, there's one more thing. Owing to the fact that Mr. Nicholas Randler has won this race so easily for the last two seasons, this time he's going to be specially handicapped with four cocktails. <laughs> yes, Mr. Barretti has two, and the rest one. Oh. And quite enough, too. Four drinks for me, too. I'm as good a man as he is. All right, all right, all right. Four cocktails for Mr. Drake. <laughs> and may he keep his handicap down. <laughs> uh, come on, I shall count three. Are you ready? One, two, three, go. <laughs>
take us to the hotel quickly. Oh, George, dearest, are you hurt? I'm all right, Kitty. Well, a fine mess you made of things, didn't you? Ah, Kitty. I told you you shouldn't drink all those cocktails. I suppose you think you're a hero, just because you weren't killed. from London. Well? Well, they've told her Nick was out and she wants to talk to me. Why don't you? Well, I can't tell her that. Tell Mrs. Randall that we're out and you've left a message for me to call her. We, oui, madame. What in the world am I going to tell her? I can't tell her that Nick was at Stephanie's villa all night. What's wrong with that? Anyway, the doctor said he shouldn't be moved. Now, don't you drag the doctor into this. Well, the doctor did say it. Anyway, it's a large villa. Oh, you men, you certainly amaze me. Here, the expedition lost its way and stopped to procure a guidebook. Yes, Frank Buck, go on. But had to retire quickly before the dangerous advances of the inhabitants. <laughs> under the shelter of a heathen obelisk. <laughs> where we took refuge disguised as a zebra. <laughs> oh, Nick, you're crazy. Oh, Among dear. the petrified mermaids, we found a fresh one. <gasps> that awful, what do you mean fresh? Imagine our horror when we found the streets of this town flooded with water. Oh, Venice, what a divine place. An oasis after an interminable half hour of drought. This is where we very nearly didn't bring you back alive. How many of those did you have? Oh, about eight. <laughs> oh, oh, what happened? This treacherous beast uses a strange mode of transportation, most puzzling to those in pursuit. Put it upside down. Wrong. Reckon Sie Deutsch, mein kleiner Liebchen, Pumpchen, Sauerkraut? <laughs> no, thank you. We don't want a guide. No, thank you. We don't want a guide. Thank you. Don Pedro Spain. in Spain, who taught me a thing or two. Here I left my courageous little wife and went on alone. Ken. Oh, what's this? The can DT, dear. Why, George has got them. And how? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I had a fall. <laughs> oh, what is this? <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Hi, Fusaini. Is that you, Nick? Uh, yes, I, I think it is, dear. Who's the girl? Uh, uh, what you say then? Who's the girl? Oh. <laughs> Mom. Mom. <laughs> you didn't see a bit of it. Sorry, my dear, but whenever I sit down nowadays, I drop off. It's all this exercise. Mm -hmm. I've noticed what a lot you're taking. <laughs> well, I don't celebrate my first visit to your new home every day. <laughs> my own business, anyhow. <laughs> Heaven's the time. Goodbye, my dear. Oh. Sorry to have to take Nick away tomorrow, Ed, but I'm off for a month's holiday, and I always leave everything to him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're quite right. Have a grand time. Why don't you come to turn ahead with me, Julie? I'd love to, but I can't. Why not? It's only just for one night. Mm -mm. What's all the mystery? Ask me no questions. Get down tomorrow as early as you can. I'll be up at the crack of dawn. <laughs> Well, goodbye, my dear. Goodbye. Yes, and by the way, a darn good dinner. Darn well served. <laughs> Put it a bit heavy, though. <laughs> oh, no. How about showing me the rest of the pictures? Oh, darling, there aren't really very many more. I think I ought to go to bed now, don't you? I've got to get up soon. All right. Come in. In a minute. Mary. Yes, I want you to telephone Mr. Plants by early in the morning and tell him I'll give him two extra hours if he promises to finish the portrait. Yes, yes. And there'll only be one for lunch and dinner. Yes, ma'am.
Judy. Oh. Judy, I've, I've got something to tell you. There was somebody else there. I didn't know she was going to be there, or I shouldn't have gone. I swear I shouldn't. Wait a minute, I can't hear a single word. What was all that about? It wasn't anything, dear. Hey, I'll be out in a minute. Wonderful to have such a vivid reminder of our honeymoon. You know, I can almost hear the same sounds and catch the same scents. If ever we feel romance slipping away from us, I mean, in the thousand years from now, we can always run them again. Judy, you do know I love you, don't you? Why, of course I do, silly. <laughs> mm. Bless you. I was awfully pleased you wanted me with you and Can. I would have loved to have seen the boat race. But it did seem important to get the flat ready. It is nice, isn't it? Yes, it's grand, darling. Still now, I almost feel as if I had been with you. Oh, I wish to heaven you had been. Mm, what, dear? Judy. It's no good, Judy. I can't rest till I've told you. It's been terrible for me. But Nick, darling, what? Down at Cannes, Stephanie was there. I don't want to make excuses, but I was awfully disappointed that you didn't come, and I went into that wretched cocktail race. And I had a heap of cocktails. And then the crash. And she was there. Stephanie, I mean. And they took me up to her villa. It was the last night. And I stayed there. Julie, say something. What do you expect me to say? Do you expect me to cry? Or scold? Or make a scene? Well, I, I didn't know what to expect. I just had to tell you. Judy, say you forgive me. I do. I forgive you. Judy. Judy, my dear. Darling, it doesn't make me love you any the less. In fact, I love you more. I'd give anything in the world for it not to have happened. And I'm... I'm dreadfully sorry. And... What more can I say? I don't want you to say any more. It was nice of you to have told me. Let's forget. Let's not remember that it ever happened. It's past. Judy, you do know I love you, don't you? Why, of course.
Judy? Judy, what is it? What are you thinking? About the things that happened while you were away. Oh. Uh, Mr. Ronson wanted us to dine with him. Did you go? No. I was too busy with the flat. The flat's finished now. I've been talking and talking to you, Julie, trying to get your mind off your troubles when you have not heard a word. I've been here and here and here. And about all the rest of it, I know practically nothing. But I know more about that than I do about what's in here. Good evening, sir. Mrs. Randall's out. She wasn't expecting you back until tomorrow. Oh, she's out. Any idea where she is? Yes, sir. She's dining with a Mr. Ron. Oh, all right, Mary. Thank you. Uh, have you had any dinner? No, I don't want to, thank you. Jealousy is a wild beast. Yes. I hope you've forgotten that I said it was beyond me because it isn't. My heart's mad with jealousy and my head says it oughtn't to be. And I'm being torn to pieces between the two. You mean you want to hurt Nick as much as he has hurt you? Oh, I don't want to hurt Nick. What good would that do? Well, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth is what most people believe. I know it was the first thing I felt. But I hope I've got beyond that. I want to know myself and how to face this. Nick says it hasn't changed him, that he even loves me more. Can that be true? How can I know? If I were to do what Nick has done and still love him, then I could believe him. And if I came to love someone else, then he wouldn't have the power to hurt me like this. But where would be my marriage and everything that I've planned for it? Oh, but it is easy enough to give advice when one's own heart is not involved. I have it. I meant never to say it. Tomorrow I shall be gone. I meant that you should never know. I'm glad you said it. My ship sails in the morning. If you want me to stay, it sails without me. My days of searching are over. Don't come back. Then, my dear, I must know you are happy. You can. Whatever my decision.
lady may return. I am not at home to anybody else. Number ten, please. Yes, it'll do. Wait. Mr. Ronson, please. Mr. Ronson is not in, sir. But he is in. No, sir. But I know he's in. There's a lady dining with him. There's no one in, sir. Street, please. Well, we've had a nice quiet evening, Governor. You frightened me. I didn't expect you back to lunch. Came back last night. Last night? When? Before dinner. Before dinner? It's morning now. Why are you up? I haven't been to bed. Why not me? You were with Ronson. I had dinner with him. But you've only just got back from Runson. I haven't. I left him before midnight. That's not true. It is true. Then what have you been doing? Walking and riding around. That's a very good story, dear. You might have thought of something a little bit better than that. But you must believe. There are things I wanted to think about and make up my mind about, and I have. Then why did you go to Runson? Oh. I suppose he didn't make love to you by any chance. Did he? Will you swear he didn't? 
You wouldn't come to Stonyhedge. There was all that mystery. I suppose you thought I was out of the way. Nick, you're not being fair. When you told me about Stephanie, I didn't make a scene. I tried to understand. So I'm trying to live up now to the things we agreed on. And I want to go on doing that. Now we're getting at it. Now you're telling me about Ronson. You've had your revenge. All right, I see. Unless it wasn't for the first time. Maybe that's why you wouldn't come to Cannes. Oh, you have no right to speak to me like that. No right. And even if it were true, it's only what you did. I hate you. <laughs> Ronson is not here, sir. Then I'm going to wait till he gets back. When do you expect him? In about two years. He's sailing this morning for the Arctic. Are you sure the boat sailed yet? Can you find out, please? I will try. He came back from Cairns. Oh, then I was right. How did you find out? He told me. He told you? Fool. Oh, are all men as dumb as George? Oh, but Judy, I haven't broken for good, have you? No, no, he's coming here this afternoon. As a matter of fact, I thought it was Nick when you came. Tell me all about it. Well, I'd rather not talk about it. Oh, don't be mean. Judy, that's Nick. Now, uh, Judy. Come and see me soon, Judy. Now, remember, injured wife, not doormat. Don't let him off too easily. Make him suffer. Make him give till it hurts. Goodbye. Bye. Oh, oh Lord, poor Claire. Oh, oh, this is a surprise. How do you do and goodbye? That's all right, Judy. I can find my way out. Oh, but I'd give my shirt if I could stay. Uncle. Judy, what on earth happened between you and Nick? I got back to Stony Hedge last night and found the whole place upside down. Jackson tells me that Nick's been there alone for a month, acting like a maniac. Car wrecked, aeroplane smashed, lame two of my best hunters. The whole county's talking about it. Well, that boy's off his head. What on earth's happened, eh? Hmm? Shall I come back later? Nick, how on earth did you get here? Let your stomach heads two hours ago. I drove her. It's just a hundred miles. Anyway, here I am. Huh. Well, I don't know why. What do you mean? I don't know why. A letter from Judy asking me to come and see her. Mm -hmm. Perhaps she'll explain. Yes, I'll explain. But it isn't easy. I, I'd rehearsed a little speech. But it was to Nick alone. Like me to go? No, I'd rather you stayed. It would be easier. Nick, I want you to congratulate Uncle. He's going to be a grand uncle. Of course, he's a grand uncle to anybody, but now he's going to be a real grand uncle to somebody. Me? A grand uncle? To a child of yours? Three of them. Four of us. Champagne. Got any? Yes, I asked them. Yeah, Mary. Jane. Harriet. What's your name? Oh, I'd drink the health of a new portly in anything but the 21. Yeah, come on, you two. Yes. Now to my heir, the future master of Stony Hedge. Judy, it's the boy. 
I hope so, and I hope it'll look just like Nick. The very image of his father. Nick, don't look like that. I know what you're thinking. Put it out of your mind. Please put it out of your mind. Nick, Judy, what's the matter with you two? Here, yeah, Nick, what is it? It's been my fault. No. Would you please let me tell this my own way? Tell it how you like, only tell it. I went to Cannes. Well? Well, Stephanie was there. Stephanie? You and Stephanie? Yes. Upon my soul, Nick. Now I understand why you were alone at Stony Head. Good heavens, boy. No. I'm too old to preach. You sent for him. And you'll forgive him. I have forgiven him. Forgiven? She's done the same. Nick, will you never believe me? How can I? Then I shan't ask you again. If you'll never believe it's your child, then I don't want it to be. It's mine. That's all I care about now. It's hopeless. You're right, it is hopeless. I thought this would bring us closer together. It hasn't. It's taken us further apart. Out of reach. Out of reach. <laughs> She was going to see you. She left me over an hour ago. Judy, what are you doing here? I've come to you and George. Did anything go wrong? Everything. Oh, my dear. No, oh, please don't sympathize with me. I couldn't bear it. Only I didn't love him so much. <gasps> oh, good heavens. What's the matter? I forgot all about it. <gasps> Hello? Yes, this is Kitty. Yes, we're here, but... She hung up. Who is it? Well, I met her down in the lounge just now, and she said she wanted to see us. So I said, come up. Then seeing Judy and hearing what you had to say put her completely out of my mind. Who's her? Stephanie. Stephanie? She mustn't come up here. That's what I'm saying, but she's coming. We'll have to get Judy away. It's too late. You go out in the hall and stop her. What am I going to do with her? Anything you like. But I don't like. What am I going to say? Now, George Drayton, any time you don't know what to say. Come in. I hope I'm not in <laughs> Certainly not. Hello, George. How are you? Fine, thanks. I wanted to see you both particularly. It's about what happened in Cannes. You remember? The cocktail regatta. The accident. Well, Nick was brought up to my villa. George, the way you keep looking at that door, anyone would think you'd Nick himself in there. No, it isn't Nick. Who is it then? Well, Stephanie, you may as well know. It's Judy. Splendid. I wanted to see her, too. Now, look here, Stephanie. It's no good seeing Judy now. She and Nick are... Well, she's terribly upset. Don't you think you'd better go? Please. I'm sorry, but as I've got to see her, we may as well settle things now. I suppose I ought to apologize for intruding like this. But there's something important to be settled between us. It's about Nick. Yes? My husband's consented to give me my divorce because of Nick. Will you do the same for him so that Nick and I can be married? If I'd been free, we should have been married long before you ever arrived in England. So I'm the intruder. Why not? My happiness is just as important to me as yours is to you. I love Nick desperately. I was married, so I knew anything to a man who knows nothing of love. Or... You needn't go on. Why not? You're wasting your time. I beg your pardon? You're standing there begging for what I'll offer you with both hands. 
There's only one thing I want now, and that's to be done with the whole thing, and to have finished with you all, and to go back to America in my own life and work. Yes, I'll divorce, Nick. You're being very generous. No, you're giving me something I can wipe the slate clean with and forget. No, not forget. You've won, but I haven't lost. There'll be someone with me to remind me of all the happiness I've had with Nick. Nick's child. You must hate me. It's a temptation. I'm trying to resist it. But I've got to get rid of hate. I don't hate Nick. Someday I shan't hate you. I warned you it would be. Seeing her again after all this month is unbearable. It will all be over now in a few minutes. I can't bear it. I give anything in the world not to lose that, do you understand? You must do something, anything, I don't care, but stop this divorce. You know there is only one way. If there is still time. All right, something, anything. How can you stop it now? In English law, where both parties have been unfaithful, a divorce is extremely doubtful, and in this case, I feel sure it would never be granted. Why? I understand, Mr. Bradley, that Lady Stephanie Fitzmaurice is not defending these proceedings. From the evidence of Mrs. Randall and the other witnesses, which I have heard so far, I am satisfied that the husband has been guilty of unfaithfulness. So of course, you can cross-examine the witness, if you so too. No, my lord. Under the circumstances, I have no further questions. Thank you, Mrs. Randall. You can leave the box. Oh, one minute. Yes, Mr. Bradley? May I have a moment, my lord? My lord, I have an important piece of evidence to put to the petitioner. May I have leave to ask her about it? Very well. Will you please remain? I take it, Mrs. Randall, you are absolutely determined to go forward with these proceedings? Yes. Very well. Can you carry your mind back to the evening of May the 15th? May the 15th? Did you spend that evening in the rooms of Mr. Ivan Ronson? Yes. You did? Did you on that evening drive your car there yourself and leave it outside the house? Yes. What time did you arrive there? About eight o'clock. In the evening? Yes. What time did you drive your car away? Yes, but I, I left... I... Answer my question, please. What time did you drive your car away? Would it surprise you to learn that your husband saw your car outside Mr. Ronson's house at three o'clock on that morning? It obviously does surprise you. Would it surprise you further to learn that earlier that evening, about 12 o'clock, your husband rang the bell of this house and was informed by a servant that nobody was in and the door was slammed in his face? Now, Mrs. Ryan, what time did you drive your car away? About 7 o'clock. On the following morning? Yes. Will you please hand this letter to the witness? Is that note in your handwriting? Yes. Yeah. Did you write it to Mr. Ronson? Yes. 
Will you please read that note to his lordship? Must I? Read it, please. Goodbye, Ivan. I'm proud to have had your love. I shall never forget our last night together. Judy. My lord, I protest. I, uh, I haven't even seen a copy of this note. Let me see it, please. You admit this is written by you? Yes. When? On that morning. After you had spent all that time in this man's room? But I wasn't there. Not there? Not all the time. But you admit that your car was there all night? Yes. Where were you? Walking about London. I don't know where. All night? No, I took a taxi. But your car was there for you? Yes, but... Is this your only explanation? You must realize, Mrs. Randall, that if I find that you've withheld evidence of your own unfaithfulness, which you should have voluntarily have put before the court, it may very likely be that I must withhold my discretion to grant you your divorce. My lord, I think I ought to mention that all this is a complete surprise to me and to the solicitors instructing me. I quite appreciate that. If you think it will assist matters, I shall be pleased to see you and Mr. Bradley in my private room. If you will meet me there at once, I will adjourn the court for a short while. As your lordship pleases. I must speak to the judge. Don't hate me for what I've just done. I had to do it, dear. I didn't know it was going to be like that. I swear I didn't. I was out of my mind. I had to try to keep you. Please understand. I didn't mean to hurt you. We can't hurt one another any more than we have. Oh, Judy, I can't go on without you. I love you so. We hoped our marriage would be different. It would be a perfect understanding. Oh, Nick, what have we done to one another? Judy, you said we should grow up out of our own experience. Can't we do that? Our ideas were all right. We've just failed. I should never have doubted you from the beginning. Never. It was I who started the failing. No, I started it. No, darling, it was my fault. No, it was my fault. I must apologize. I, I, I am instructed that my client cannot be found. Perhaps I, uh, my lord, I'm in much the same difficulty as my learned friend. Mr. Randall cannot be found either. <laughs> but I, I cannot have the time of the court oh. wasted like this. I understood that you were ready to continue. Call their names to the corridor, please. Mr. Randall, Mrs. Randall. Mr. Randall, Mrs. Randall. Mr. Randall, Mrs. Randall, 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 Mr. Randall, Mrs. Randall.